Morning. Is this, is this working well with you, Andy? Yes. Okay, good. It was on and I didn't know and I've been up here just talking. So um, welcome to this uh, beautiful day in, at Southminster. Even though the weather is not lovely, we need the rain. And we're thankful that it didn't happen yesterday when we had a few wonderful things going on. But um, if you would um, join us now as we as we um, light the Christ candle, is that first? Okay, so that, okay, I'm just looking at, okay. If you're joining by Zoom, I see I'm not reading. I'm not reading well, so I've got to put my orange glasses on. Again, orange All right. glasses. Yeah. Go balls. Um, also Halloween girls and boys. Um, bring your own Christ candle and we'll light them together. Um, remember when there's an asterisk, we stand. And when there's bold print, we we re we say things together in unison. We would like a couple of um, updates. Let's go with pumpkin patch. Two more days. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the pumpkin patch has gone great. Thank you so much to everybody that have, has put in so much work. Um, and we got just two more days to go. I, I don't know how we are on uh, workers, but you might want to check just to see if we have a hole here or there that needs to be filled. Last time I last time Lynette told me about it, they have we have an opening from two to four tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, and also we did blessing of the animals yesterday. It was a lot of fun. And we um blessed three puppy dogs and it was awesome. <laughs> oh. Yes, I've got a list. I've got a list of things, but go ahead. Wait, hold on. My mic's Okay. Um, just bringing to your attention the Norman Binkley basket. Um, this is our last week for collecting for gift cards for 50 Norman Binkley children whose families need help at the holidays. collection for this. Now, I say, oops, I say this is the last week. I forgot my checkbook. So if you're like me, you might have to bring it next week. <laughs> that okay, Barbara? Okay. So, um, yeah, here, here, here it is. We need, um, we've always done a good job in the past of giving um, families these gift Walmart gift cards. So please donate generously. And this is for the holidays. Thank you. Huh? 50, uh, yeah, 50 families. And, um, you know, if you don't know anything about Norman Binkley, just ask us. It's extremely, they have a lot of um, international students, a lot of uh, low income students. And so, and they have a very devoted staff. The staff has been great to work with. I think one thing that really speaks highly of the administration is that they had all their teachers in line way before the school year started. And of course, there's a shortage on teachers, but their teachers come back. So, yeah, it's a very another nice thing is they do. They do come regularly to uh, be a part of the neighborhood association meetings, which says a lot to me because they oh, yeah. are very engaged in being a part and listening to what's going on in the community for their school. Right. They do. They do. And a little bit of history. We've been supporting Norman Binkley for years. Um, it started with monetary donations and it went to coat donations at one point in time. We were bringing coats for the winter and then we backed it up a bit so we could get on the bandwagon before the holidays. And that's how the gift cards for the, how that happened. Yes, ma'am. So they ask for money so they can buy uniform gift cards for people so not one person gets something and another person gets something else so that's nice let's keep prayers for our wayfinding uh, team i came up the other day and saw some of that team working in the yard talking to our council person and a couple other people and they're working quietly but diligently uh, each day Stewardship season, we're always, it seems, asking for um, for something, and that's just the nature of the beast, because we 
to do, we have to have funds and we have to have a plan. So stewardship season starts on November 1st and you'll be getting an email um, or snail mail uh, in the mail soon. Uh, we hope to have all pledges for our financial support so we can get our budget together for the next year, no later than November the 13th. So we're asking for a fairly quick turnaround when you receive these uh, requests to go ahead and pray about it, think about it, think on it, ponder on it, talk to your spouse, your partner, your your family, see how you all can um, support our stewardship pledges this year. Next Sunday, time change. Are we ready for it or are we still like five o'clock dark, <laughs> both morning and night? Um, let's see. Um, so we have to move our clocks back. So you get to sleep an hour in. So that's good. If you come early, you're just going to enjoy sitting here quietly. Um, life and faith together uh, is something that's going to be happening over brunch next week. So please make plans to be able to stay and partake in uh, that discussion uh, as the church. Um, I think I read a little bit about it. Would you like to speak to that? Just to, would you like to say anything about it other than that it's a uh, yeah, life and faith together is something we're doing every communion Sunday. It involves, um, now that we're fixed, Andy can turn this mic down. Thank you, Andy. Um, it involves conversation together. It's meant to get all generations finding ways to interact and talk together. Last month, I know we had some phenomenal conversations about faith and life. People who had never had those kind of conversations maybe together. New friendships were formed. It was um, great, and we hope you'll make that a priority every Communion Sunday, every first Sunday of the month. And then your next announcement uh, has just been changed. Okay. The, the Neighborhood Engagement and Welcome Committee, which is all things interacting with the neighborhood around us. That's all the communication, publicity, letting people know who and where we are and what we're up to. Um, Anissa chairs that, and that will be on November 13th during brunch. And that is because Bethany has an announcement about choir. Well, that has changed too. Okay. <laughs> um, we were going to, uh, we have pushed our, our choir uh, anthem back to the second Sunday, but now I have learned some information that we may have to push it back even one more week, but I'm just not sure yet. I haven't decided. So I will, anybody, any of our choir folks out there, just hang tight and we'll, we'll, I'll decide something at some point. Y'all are flexible though. That's what I love about you. <laughs> so that meeting will still be on the 13th. Yeah. If yeah. you're interested in serving on that team. Yeah. And then while I'm here, um, a lot of announcements today. Sorry about that. Um, we have some, a couple of things in the program that you might not be familiar with. Our first hymn is number 422. It's probably new to a lot of you. We're going to play it through all the way one time on the piano, and then we will just sing it to you. You don't even have to sing it if you do not want to. Now, if you are a great sight reader or know the hymn, please do sing. And then our doxology is a little different too, but I think you're going to love it. Um, so we'll do the same thing with that. We'll play it through. We'll sing it for you and feel free to jump in, but don't feel uh, awkward and obligated to to sing. <laughs> uh, we did not get a, an update on Trunk or Treat. Is there someone here that would like to give us an update on that? Okay, only because I have a microphone. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was um, the child care families came out. We had two Bob Rosses um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> who happened to be next to each other. So we were just confusing people. Um, lots of great costumes and many, many people said how much they enjoyed it and how much they appreciated the availability for them to do that. So next year, we hope to have more communication between the child care parents who are planning that and the church so we can have more and more cars. Excellent. Also, there is a there is a sign up in the uh, on the first pew for anybody that would like Advent in a bag. And if you're not familiar with what that is, it is something that you can take home and you can it's a daily uh scripture or meditation uh, activities for the family, uh, something to do every day during the season of Advent. 
And, um, and I see we have another announcement. Along the line of uh, Southminster Daycare and Bob and I have moved Cloverland Acres, which is a place for the other end of the scale for the <laughs> old folks. But just about everybody that we meet there says, oh, I know your church. And guess why? The daycare. They said, my grandchildren went there. Oh, so I'm, I'm just so impressed. And they have such wonderful things to say. Some of them are younger. Some of the children are. The grandchildren may be here now. But I'm, I'm just so proud to hear that. Okay. Are there any other announcements? I'm so tough. No. <laughs> the Lord be with you. The word repentance, it's not a very fun word. In our day and time, it's almost synonymous with regret or remorse. And sometimes repentance does involve regret or remorse. But it's so much more than that. It's an invitation to a joyful, deeper relationship with God, not a threat of banishment from God. Let's worship together.
join me in the call to worship and opening prayer. If God is for us, who can be against us? Nothing can separate us from God's love. God, we are here for your steadfast love. God, we are here for your mercies. Let us worship our loving and merciful God. Eternal God, protector of all who put their trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, fill us with your mercy and your grace, that with you to rule and guide, we may choose, we may use the good things of this present life, that we do not neglect those of eternal worth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. could so abuse his power, serving his own interests in such a selfish way. How different from the way Jesus used his power, serving, healing, and nurturing others. Forgive us when our actions reflect those of David more than those of Jesus. The account of David shows someone yielding to temptation by feeding his own particular hunger with disastrous results, while Jesus took time to feed the crowds with miraculous results. Forgive, Forgive us the times when we have yielded to the temptation of feeding our own interests to the detriment of others around us. David demonstrated how things can get out of control when God's rules are not followed, while Jesus demonstrates how God's power can bring peace even into the stormiest situations. We confess that the way of the world looks more like the way of David than the way of Jesus. And we pray that we may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to witness to Jesus' love and compassion in and through all we do and say. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Through the power of the Holy Spirit within us, God is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can imagine or ask. So hear and believe the good news that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. You may be seated. 
join me in the prayer for illumination. God of transformation, open us now to hear and receive your word. By the power of your Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear, wisdom to understand, and courage to answer your call to us today. Amen. Our first scripture is Matthew 18, 10 through 14. Be careful that you don't look down on one of these little ones. I say to you that their angels in heaven are always looking into the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If someone had 100 sheep and one of them wandered off, wouldn't he leave the 99 on the hillside and go in search for the one that wandered off? If he finds it, I assure you he is happier about having that one sheep than about the 99 who didn't wander off. In the same way, my father, who is in heaven, doesn't want to lose one of those little ones. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See the work of your hands, galaxy spin in a heavenly dance. Oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming. I hear the sound of your voice. All at once it's a gentle and thundering noise. Oh are so overwhelming. I delight myself in you, captivated by your beauty. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by
as the kids are coming on up here, I just want to say how grateful I am to have musicians that I can just kind of throw things at them in the middle of the week. <laughs> and they go, okay. And then, you know, put together such beautiful music for us to worship with. All right, guys. How are you? Good. Anything happening this week? Anything at all? <laughs> nah. Nah. What's tomorrow? Well, tomorrow is not Tuesday. Tomorrow is Monday. But what are we doing tomorrow on Halloween? Okay. Okay, Christmas is after that. Um, but is anybody going out trick-or-treating tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, big fun. Yeah, we're going to go to that. So good. Well, today we're going to talk about... Repentance. <laughs> so this is what God sees when he looks at us. He sees a clean heart. See the clean heart? But then stuff happens. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes other people say things that hurt us, and that leaves stuff on our hearts. And sometimes, Eli and Aaron, sometimes... Just stuff happens, and we're sad, or we're hurt, and our hearts can begin to look like this, can begin to look like that. So stay right there. What happens if we hold our hearts in the light of Christ? What might happen? It'll catch on fire. Yeah, it might catch on fire, but if we're careful, <laughs> that is a good. Our hearts become whole and clean again. <laughs> I got tricks. I got secrets. So let's have a prayer. Dear God, help the light of Christ shine on me and make me whole. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Are y'all wondering how I did that? <laughs> what? Prayers for Kiana, yes, definitely. Um, <laughs> I got secrets. I got resources. And I did not burn the church down. <laughs> okay. So when we think of repent, how many of you picture the, the proverbial guy on the street corner, you know, the long beard holding the sign, repent, the end is near. But what is repentance, really? The original Greek is a word metanoia. It's similar to words like metamorphosis. It means to change our thinking, to change our way of being. Here's what it's not. It's not making ourselves miserable about our flaws. It's not wallowing in regret. It's not beating ourselves up, trying to feel bad enough to make up for sin. Here's a spoiler alert. You can't feel that bad. So why try? What it is about is a gradual, growing, and continual turning of our lives and our minds and our behavior to a new Godward direction. Sometimes that does involve remorse. But what it ends up doing is making us look and act and love more like Jesus. But what about that repent the end is near guy? Today, we're going to look at a story from scripture that, that describes one kind of repentance, and we're going to use it as a starting point to talk about repentance. 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 5. In the spring, when kings go off to war, David sent Joab along with his servants and all the Israelites, and they destroyed the Ammonites, attacking the city of Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. 
One evening, David got up from his couch and was pacing back and forth on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing and the woman was very beautiful. David sent someone and inquired about the woman. The report came back. Isn't this Eliam's daughter Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So David sent messengers to take her, and when she came to him, he had sex with her. Now she had been purifying herself after her monthly period. Then she returned home. The woman conceived and sent word to David, I'm pregnant, she said. I want to fill you in just a quick summary of what happens next. David tried to cover his tracks. He had Uriah come back from war, assuming he would sleep with his wife, think the child was his and no one would know. Uriah was a man of honor, would not sleep with his wife while his fellow soldiers were in the midst of a war. So David sent him back to the battle with a note to the general that he was to send Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, to where the fighting was the worst and then pull back so that Uriah would be killed. And he was. Picking up on verse, uh, in verse 26. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband Uriah was dead, she mourned for her husband. After the timing, time of mourning was over, David sent for her and brought her back to his house. She became his wife and bore him a son. But what David had done was evil in the Lord's eyes. Going on to chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. So the Lord sent Nathan to David. When Nathan arrived, he said, There were two men in the same city, one rich, one poor. The rich man had a lot of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing. Just one small ewe lamb that he had bought. He raised that lamb, and it grew up with him and his children. It would eat from his food and drink from his cup, even sleep in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now, a traveler came to visit the rich man, but he wasn't willing to take anything from his own flock or herd to prepare for the guest who had arrived. Instead, he took the poor man's ewe lamb and prepared it for the visitor. David got very angry at the man, and he said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the one who did this is demonic. He must restore the ewe lamb seven times over because he did this and because he had no compassion. You are that man, Nathan told David. This is what the Lord God of Israel says. I anointed you king over Israel and delivered you from Saul's power. I gave your master's house to you and gave his wives into your embrace. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. If that was too little, I would have given even more. Why have you despised the Lord's word by doing what is evil in his eyes? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and taken his wife as your own. You use the Ammonites to kill him. This is the word of the Lord. Let's look at each of the major players here. We have David. Scripture is very clear. What David did was evil in the Lord's eyes. Scripture also calls David a man after God's own heart. It says in the beginning of our passage that when kings go out to war, David didn't go. He was not with his troops as kings should be. He was hanging out, wandering around on the rooftop. He sees Bathsheba, lusts after her, learns she is the daughter of one of his advisors, Eliam, and he's married to one of his soldiers who's now in battle. He has her brought to him and has sex with her. Was this consensual? We don't know because her consent was beside the point. She didn't have a chance to offer consent or not. She was a subject of the king. So she's pregnant. Okay, that, that part where it says she was bathing after her monthly period is a weird detail, but it's a hint because the mikveh is a ritual bath that takes place for thousands of years. Jewish people have done this to purify themselves from various things. It takes place about seven days after the end of a woman's period, which is her most fertile time. And so that that little tidbit is a hint that 
This is the time when Bathsheba is most likely to become pregnant. Then David puts in motion a plan to cover his tracks. Bathsheba, the only words she gets to say in this whole thing are, I'm pregnant. Otherwise, she has no voice and she bears the brunts, brunt of David's decisions. Again, she has no option for consent. There's nothing in this passage about her being anything but a faithful Jewish woman. Yet she has been throughout history portrayed as a seductress. It's probably the most famous example we have of victim blaming. So she's impregnated by the king in a situation where her consent is irrelevant. And then the king essentially murders her husband. But she eventually becomes a powerful woman in her own right. She becomes the mother of Solomon. And she is one of the five women mentioned in Matthew's genealogy of Jesus. And in that genealogy, she's described as Uriah's wife, even though it's through the line of David that we give, that we claim for Jesus. Perhaps that is a bit of justice for her and Uriah, perhaps. Then we have Nathan. Nathan is the prophet with the really hard job, telling the king that he has sinned. And he does that so creatively. He brings this, he gets this parable that elicits David's sense of justice. And he reveals his knowledge. David says that is wrong. And we know he knows right from wrong. And he exposes his own guilt. Nathan won't allow David to sweep that under the rug as he intended. Back to David. He immediately has deep remorse. And Psalm 51 is listed as David's prayer after this confrontation with Nathan. Here's part of that psalm or prayer. Have mercy on me, God, according to your faithful love. Wipe away my wrongdoing according to your great compassion. Wash me completely of my guilt Purify me from my sin, because I know my wrongdoings. My sin is always right in front of me. I've sinned against you and you alone. I've committed evil in your sight. That's why you are justified when you render your verdict completely correct when you issue your judgment. And it goes on from there. And it's a beautiful prayer. If you're not Bathsheba or Uriah, because David says against you, you only, I have sinned. And I take issue with that. Um, anyway, my hope is that outside of what we know in scripture, some kind of amends, some kind of attempt to right the wrongs was done. Something maybe that's not recorded here. Now, please hear me clearly. True repentance of this kind, this repentance from sin it does need to involve trying to make right what has been made wrong. That's the kind of repentance we're most familiar with. The kind that does involve remorse. Here's the really, really good news to always hold front and center. God's love is always bigger than the sins for which we repent. Always. But let's go back to that original meaning of the word repent. Metanoia in the Greek. There's no mention in that of remorse or regret. It's not even a mention of confession of sin. So what does that mean for us, for our own growing in grace? What do we do with repentance? But what, what if a fuller, more accurate understanding of repentance is much more like something much bigger than just confessing sin? What if it is an invitation to a deeper, fuller, and more joyful faith? It's fascinating that early church leaders like St. Ignatius and modern scholars like Dallas Willard, who died in 2013, they came to the conclusion that repentance needed to be a continual, frequent practice in our faith lives. 
none of us sees a whole lot of value in walking around with a repent the end is near sign, right? How is that going to grow us into in, being more like Jesus? So that's not what we're always talking about. Continual, frequent repentance brings about transformation, brings about a life of joy, peace, purpose. Wow. What if it's as simple as a change in direction? Here's some examples from scripture. In the calling of the disciples, they changed the direction of their lives and they followed Jesus. Zacchaeus, remember him? He got down from that tree and had Jesus over for lunch. For so many people in the Bible, repentance involves not so much turning away from something, but turning to something that was much more life-giving. So here's a way to think about it. If we are a boat, we're on a journey toward Christ in our lives of faith. The weather, the currents, the waves, they push that boat off course. And repentance is simply correcting that course. We don't get mad at the weather and the current and the waves. They're just the way life is. So course adjustments might look like learning more about the life that is offered us in Christ and going, oh, I think I want to steer more towards that. Making changes, steering in a direction that is more towards God. Like the boat, it's just basic and ongoing living as we grow into what God created us to be. So continuing the analogy, steering away from things in that boat, away from things that could harm us, like a boat captain steers away from rocks or storms or pirates. That steering away might be from typical sins like malicious gossip or cruelty, racism, violence, hypermaterialism. Might be steering away from that, but it also might be steering away from cynicism that eats at our souls, negativity and pessimism that leaves no room for the Holy Spirit to be at work in us, or the craven self loathing that keeps us from a full and joyous life in Christ. And for those of us who have been beaten up with the idea of repentance and those of us who haven't given it a whole lot of thought, the most important part, we are loved, we are loved, we are loved, period. God will keep seeking us in that love. And love has to begin be the beginning of repentance, whether it's just that joyous correction of our course or it has remorse and sorrow with it. Here's the other most important part. God doesn't give up on us, ever. God doesn't stop inviting us to that deeper, fuller life. My prayer for all of us today is that we would know and experience that when God in Christ says, repent and believe the good news, we're not being threatened. We're being invited into a fuller and deeper, more joyous and life-giving faith. Amen. I hope that your conversations were life-giving and joyful. Turning to our moments for generosity and stewardship, we're going to have just a few moments of music in a minute. Um, to give you the time to pray and think and listen to the Holy Spirit leading. To be thankful for all that God has given you to um, figure out where you might be generous. Generosity is a hallmark of God's people. Where can you be generous with kindness, love, health, privilege, and finances? There is, of course, the offering plate here and the QR code in your um, bulletin if you'd like to support Southminster financially. Take a moment for prayer. All of our offenses are different. They, they change every year. 
but it's predicated on our players. One play at a time. Do you ever study each other during the offseason and implement someone's plays if you're taking like this place? Pray together. First of all, God, the gifts we bring to you are so small in comparison to the vast needs in our world. There's nowhere near enough to save the thousands of dying of starvation all around the world or even to meet the needs of the hungry and homeless in our own city. Yet we bring what we can. If you multiply the five small loaves and two fish, multiply our gifts as well so that once again the hungry may receive all they need and all more. this success but let's bring in our lindsay theory who is at this beat between the niners and the rams in the Lindsay, do you know how much of a rivalry this game is not just between the players but the coaches too right Sam, absolutely. You just saw it. And even the players out of here know it as well. George Kittle, the 49ers tight end, described this rivalry to me as an ongoing chess match between Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay. The Niners, of course, though, have won seven straight regular and to the spirit whose love has set me free as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be amen and sam pretty funny the contrast in descriptions and reactions to the captain we read to a time of prayer with and for one another. Um, we will in a few moments take prayer requests, but um, the last report I had from Sharon, I don't blame it for any moment. They're doing well, doing well at home. They will soon have a living caregiver. Making a ring, that's going to be a big deal. Also, um, big. Sharon checked me a, a prayer request in the middle of the week saying the insurance company wants to send Nancy home from rehab on Monday. Please be praying. Before I could even call her back, she said, wait. You know, the prayer had already been answered that she has three more weeks. The last I heard. Um, but also, um, they've asked for tra traveling mercy for Steve Young as he travels to the Philippines this week. And Nancy's 102 year old stepmother passed this week. The celebration of life was on Thursday. So, just pray for the family as they do. Over a god in the end of the One of our former teachers at South Minster Child Care Center um, lost her home. She lived in the apartment that was consumed by fire. I think it had it Early in the morning, her name is Taylor Vogel, and uh, she lost everything. So we need to keep her in our prayers and how we can help. If any of you are interested in helping her um, financially, I have her Venmo, if you'd like to give money that way. Right now, um, right now. Well, an option is a ball carry here. Well, they're steering well, and they have a chance for some success. You don't really want to get hit. Shot and conflict. You don't want to get hit. You don't want to get hit. You don't want to get hit. Um, the college roommate Ryan's mom died yesterday um, kind of unexpectedly. I was, well, it's a very rare form of sarcoma. And she was in May. So. And I was with him when he lost his dad in college. So he's, oh, gosh, yeah. Needs another yard. 
Okay. And first of all, uh, traveling mercy, your mom, who will be going to school. Okay. Um, okay, me and them. Um, we'll be traveling mercy, uh, Andrew, your father, Charlie, and, um, really quick, wait, are you? Just stay up and he crosses that goal. Um myself, I have been to the foot doctor I go each Wednesday. <laughs> and last Wednesday I was in a little more pain, so she took x rays. And I've got a bone infection. Very minor. Should be a very minor surgery, but that will be this coming Friday. Yeah, I mean, we're going to run out of the football at you, and we're going to think that our offensive line and our tailback are um, A friend of mine, up Mark Kavanaugh, a.k.a. ex-husband, <laughs> and his wife, um, just had another baby, um, born 26 weeks. Um, she's doing well, she's a week old, but her name is Madison, Madison Kavanaugh. Um, prayers for them. And Everybody, thank you. Okay, we don't need to apologize for lifting things up. Right now, what are we seeing so far from Trevor Lawrence? That's the intersection of the one yard. Hopefully, she'll either have to have surgery or she'll go on with more chemo. But uh, so it's a big concern. Yeah. Well, he's giving it to him. He's giving it to him. All right, let's go way back west on the opposite side. We were talking to Lindsay Theory about the Niners and the Rams. The Niners really have dominated this in the regular um, season. Karen and Rick's daughter got here yesterday. In all this, Rex, I'd like your take on this. They know each yeah, other. So very well. wedding. Of us win. And it was, um, no, 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 it's Disney World. Disney World. I told you everything Sharon told me that and Nancy and was ready time. for visitors. <laughs> Has anybody also had that news? And I mean, so we can get the address. I wasn't in the newsletter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we had it at that point. You know, we're, we're do you have the address? To talk about the shifts and the motions and all the things that they do, but you've got the master over there on both sides of the ball can really yeah. give you a good game plan in terms of in terms of how to play it. But it's about taking care of the football. And Shanahan said it this week. I mean, it's NHP we in Franklin. The turn and I have the number, number, of course, that's also in the draft. This game. Who Fair Street. Yeah, my favorite thing about that piece Fair was ground. Just, okay. Actually, say out loud, yeah, we okay. steal ideas and plays from each other all oh, the time. Three, thank you, Judy. Well, they also stole a player from another Their team. Prayer request, Susan Caffrey. And the wait for the and he's going to give this 49ers <laughs> offense is really impressive. He's the he's the Where's Waldo guy. Two backs inside our runner like he did it to <laughs> him under David Shaw. We're running downhill. You know it's coming. We don't say it in the microphone. Nobody on Zoom can hear it. Touches last week when he was brand new. Here he is as a back coming out of the back. This is what I think everyone thinks of. We get mismatches on the back. Really, what his mind and what I dream. So, this is part that. He's in the backfield, but now I'm going to motion out to play wide receiver. <laughs> He's coming out. He trained with Brandon Stokely out in Denver to learn how to play wide receiver. Oh, yeah. My dad's and my dad's you know, Kathy. <laughs> All different ways. So whether uh, down the line, mother, who I have kind of a iffy relationship with, but um, over the last two months, is, is be I, mean, I gotta say this, I talked to Anthony Lynn, who's coaching the yeah. running guys. Um, and this it's happened in two weeks, and, and I already told him that I'm the second part of standing room. It's been two weeks, he goes the entire But they run every test, like, known to man, and can't figure it out. So, I don't know. Just some people, yeah. He wasn't there. Absent of Debo Samuels in a game like this, a lot of more. Um, just prayers for 
Cal Shanahan is going to use him in the backfield, um, all the motion and things like that. I found out this morning that the Revolutionary Guard in Iran is now so deploying I am to see, you know, and with another week, people who uh, are still gathering on the street, really they are a guy like CMC, treating but him incredibly well. Like so this, hopefully, we all show uh, talking about we're about we're about we're about when you give up 11 hits and seven sacks, and you have two weeks to prepare for this team, this game is all about Sean McVay and how he's going to turn the tide of getting this team a, a win and ready to see. I can't, get, I can't get over the sight of what happened to Stafford. I mean, you know, I mean, um, you remember that? And how bad, and how bad that offensive line really looks and how bad they're still playing. So, I mean, that's such a – so I'm thinking the Niners because you can't just get over that because this, with all the scheme and everything, it's it's based on running the football. It's about blocking people, all right? So the pass right and that's a feature for many, many years. Um, he has gone through um, can't get that a little extra time, obviously, not used to seeing them have success during the regular seasons against some friends and enemies. I guess that would make them frenemies in this game. Frenemies. Uh, let's get to our game picks coming up. On countdown, who's taken the Packers over the Bills? Can the Patriots win their 13th straight against the Jets? And if you can decide what happened when Randy Moss invited Bill Belichick to his Halloween party. Over a week ago, over a week ago, Vanderbilt, she was fought life flight at from Jeff County. Um, she has some brain injury, she has um. Broken bones, a lot of faith. Um, right, yes. Coming out yeah, today. Yeah. It's like a one-time casual thing with Tyra. I was talking um, about. They've been doing CP scans and stuff, but her name is Mackenzie. Mackenzie Harnessed, okay. and a, a very sweet family and right person. But I look at what she's going to be able to make a recovery in this and for physical for health today. Uh, and Thanksgiving for all those gone before us. You know, I know all six days coming up in a couple of days, and I always enjoy that service here. But people who've gone on and for us and just taking time on on maybe Tuesday to just say a prayer for all those people who connected up. Pacifico's group for those who follow the road. A, a woman in the neighborhood on Abbey Drive um, named Ross Tolentino. And she has terminal brain cancer. She has a second grader, Norman Binkley, um, and she has a single mom. Um, she goes to the ER just about every week. And I found out she spent time this weekend in the ER. Um, so I just want to lift her up and her son, who is there, and, and you know, the one that's called him. Very, 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 not literally, but you'll find out who done it. I can solve this thing. I just got to talk to the murderer right now. I'd like to ask for prayers for my son-in-law, Mike, that he found out this morning that his father has been poor. It's the relief that lasts up to 12 his hours. His father's name is Foreman. Starting congestion at the source, relieving nasal congestion and sinus pressure by reducing swelling in the sinuses. Try Vic's sinus. Is your advisor giving you incomplete advice? At Creative Planning, we provide all the answers you need. So every so your works harder together. 38 years old, and none of the three are related, but this is my cousin Mario, who was addicted from Guatemala. Um, was found on the street. But I think his life was so traumatizing. He never, ever really was able to find peace in that and so he had a lot of problems throughout the year with drugs and uh and uh, had a stroke on sunday night so, for your attention there are tons of trending dances to discover on social media and there's even this easiest way to book and examine america's best get two pairs of pants for 79.95 book your exam today it hurts all of our hearts and pray that God can soul and um, 
brown cleans better by surrounding each tooth. So clean, you'll feel like you just left the dentist. Let's put a god of prayer together. This new chapter in multivitamin studies gets so much more nutrients, more research, 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 more May the love of Christ urge us on them. May we walk by faith. We thank you, God, for all the blessings you have poured out on us all. Strengthen us, God, for repentance that leads to joy and transformation. Welcome back to Sunday NFL Countdown. Let's get you to London, where the Broncos under two minutes are inside the five. Take it away. Especially lift up those in our own community. Those named this morning as needing healing. that is a missed false start. Ends up for a touchdown for Denver. Credit difference offense with an incredible drive. So the extra point. How about the Broncos fighting late in the... On Friday and pray that that might go smoothly. Lord, we pray for Madison Kavanaugh that she would thrive. We join Judy, Lord, in lifting up Sandy as she hears results of a scan tomorrow. We rejoice with Karen and Rick in their daughter's wedding. Lord, we um, thank you for John and for the great love that helps Judy give such wonderful care to him. I lift up to Amber's grandmother and um, pray that they would know what to do. Lord, we join Greta in lifting up the women of Iran struggling for freedom and now facing snipers. God, we pray for Valerie Thompson facing chemo, for her uncle Cecil facing a heart attack, and for Mackenzie in this ICU pray, Lord, that you would give her deep healing rest and restore her to wholeness. Lord, we lift up to you our neighbor suffering with brain cancer. Ask that you would be with them. Help us know what we can do and then give us courage and strength and initiative to do that. Lord, we grieve with Anissa's family over the loss of Mario. And we pray that they and we might see him in the light of your mercy and resurrection. And again, and Lord, we lift up Mike's father, Bethany and Lynette's son-in-law. Pray that you would be with him as he faces this new diagnosis and the beginnings of treatments. Lord, we thank you for all who have gone before as we approach All Saints Day, ask that you would keep their memories precious in our hearts and hold them close to you. Holy God, we ask all this in the name of Christ, our Redeemer, by the Holy Spirit who activates your, whole, your love in us. And we ask all this that your love may be like seeds scattered manifesting in small and unexpected ways the greatness that you are. May your love take root in our lives, and may we walk by faith. We entrust the prayers of our hearts, those known only to you, those spoken aloud. We entrust them all to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And there you go. But go now and take hold of the life that really is life. Embrace repentance as a step toward joy and deeper peace. As a beloved child of God, knowing nothing can change that love for you. And may the love of God, our creator, our redeemer, and sustainer be with you as you go. Amen. Go in peace. Outside of the event, I want to see the emotional health of the Chicago. Change my heart, oh God. Make it.